Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We're back with more burning crap. And the, my neighbor is mowing his lawn right now. It's 10 o'clock at night and he's mowing his lawn. That has to be illegal. That has to be. No, that's just an asshole thing to do. What? Oh my god. It's like 20 degrees outside. The, why? It's January. You don't need to mow your lawn. Okay, anyway, this isn't going to be about my neighbor. Um, so yeah. <laughs> We're doing chapter 17, chapter 2 7. Yep. And we are going to be bringing Gerald Don Donaga. I forgot these names. Stanley. Donag. Let's just go with that. Right. Pri Priya. Lavana. Gary. Aprila. That sounds like a name of a uh, medication like Viagra. Irik. <laughs> Worst part is it's a woman. Haru. That's even worse considering. Detsuka and Elias. And I have a plan for Desica. Mean Elias. <laughs> Elias, and I have a plan with Desica for this chapter. You might be, uh, you might already know what I have, what I'm gonna plan on using him for. Anyway, let's begin. Oh wait, <laughs> wait, hang on. This is uh, oh Super Mario Bros. Three um airship music. Mm, good. Yeah, it's really good. I I've really been good. listening to some other the old video game stuff. I found one song that makes me like I like it. It's from this one game on Super Nintendo called Sparkster. It from Konami. There's one stage that has a really good song in it. I could post that later. Oh really? Konami? Yeah, they're Yep, Konami. Hmm. Well Konami isn't really known for their music, so now you kinda got me. Oh I mean Castlevania, Metal uh, Gear. Well Castlevania is like well it's Castlevania. Like I'm talking about like other that something that isn't Castlevania. Because like mm. Castlevania music, like th there is no such thing as a bad Castlevania music. It's kind of like Call of Duty. Like there is no such thing as a bad Call of Duty. Infinity Warfare. Okay. Black Ops Three. No, those aren't bad Call that of Duty. That one those... on the PSP. No, there isn't. Yeah, wait, what? Wait, what? There was a wait, there was a Call of Duty on PSP. There was also one on the DS, but we don't talk about that one. One. There were five on the DS. That's five them, too many. And you played all of them with a D-pad. I was watching a video on that, and uh, so the guy goes like this. So how do you play a Call of Duty on the DS? Well, we got a D-pad. So far, so good. You can't play Call of Duty without a D-pad, can you? Yeah. I mean, it's the closest thing to an analog stick. I know, but it's like, seriously, like, a D-pad? Like, no. Call of Duty was not designed to play... Like, was not designed to play on a D-pad. No, you play it with an analog stick. Like, actually... Or a keyboard mouse. Yeah, because... Yeah, yeah, they were released for the PC, too, weren't they? They were originally the PC. Oh, yeah, yeah, And then, like, I think it was with Call of Duty 2 that they started coming to consoles. Finest Hour was a console-exclusive spin-off in 2004. Then Call of Duty 2, that was when it was multi-plat. Okay, so I was right. Yeah, because I remember yeah. that that's when I first started. Like, uh, I went back to the old school Call of Duties with Call of Duty 2. I didn't play 1 because it wasn't available to me at the time. But that was a, because I couldn't get my hands on it. And dear God, I am so glad. I don't think I'll ever go back to the old school Call of Duties. Like, Call of Duty 2? Jesus Christ. Oh, those were good ones. No, no, like, it's like it's good the... historically, but like for gameplay value, Jesus Christ. Like, I like the original ones because it gave you a health bar and not the, oh, there's some strawberry jam on my face. Let me hold on while I wipe it off. Yeah, give me like five, give me like five seconds to recover. All right, I'm good to go. Let's get back into this. Yeah, who would have thought a spoon to scrape that off and put on this English muffin? I'm ready for battle. <laughs> the English muffin. Yeah, it's like the GameCube, PS2, Xbox original version of Call of Duty 2, which was just based off of the Big Red 1 infantry division that the United States military had. Mm -hmm. Going through North Africa, Sicily, France. Even getting people that worked on that show, Band of Brothers, to voice for it. Which I found interesting, because oh, ow. at that time, that was the HBO show that you wanted to watch if you weren't watching The Sopranos. Was HBO even a thing back then, though? Like, yeah. What, wait, did it, seriously, it existed during that time? Yeah, it was, uh, HBO was like sometime in the mid-90s, but it was very niche, but The Sopranos made HBO. Now if like how The Simpsons made Fox. <laughs> or South Park made Comedy Central. Seriously, or they weren't a thing until, like, those shows came on? 
No, they were very niche, but those certain shows made them really popular channels that everyone wanted to view it oh. and check the other shows out. Oh, okay. Like, one of the original shows Fox had was, like, say, 21 Jump Street, Married with Children. Now, those like, I know about. Like, Married I've, with I've Children seen. even made a joke with, like, saying, Oh, we, we got a show on Fox, yeah. Peg! <laughs> Quick, everyone, get the Fox pose! And they all get these special antennas that everyone in the family puts up in certain spots in the house. Yeah. Okay, we can watch Fox now. <laughs> what does it look like outside? Yeah, I'll let you do these voices. Oh, okay. Apparently people are clearing out the husks. Who in their right mind would do that? Didn't Prince Elias and Nuh Nahum go to help out that one poor town? All oh, right. We should help whoever they brought with them. It looks like we, they, he got some help. Agreed. Oh, nice. We got some Yeah, as you can hear from my voice, I'm kind of try to... You, you can guess why I didn't want to voice act at the moment. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I forgot momentarily. <laughs> For those of those who, like, you can hear this, but you don't know why, just tip of your finger at the moment. Yeah, like, take a while. Recovering yes. from a really bad head cold. Did you get it? Like, but hey. Did you get it before or after the blizzard? It happened before the blizzard. Oh, what? So that, around Friday understood. and then going through and... Yeah, I never understood that. Like, you get sick before a storm, but after the storm, like, you, like... No, wait, okay, I just put you that. Like, you get sick before a storm? Like, that never made sense to me. That always happens to me for some reason. I never understood that. that. It can happen. Yeah, no, I know it can happen, but it's just so... This is weird. Alright, Meister Lance versus Meister Schwartz. Oh, what the heck? I missed 284s? Come on. Welcome to Rad Rex. Uh, oh my god, it's so great to be back playing Fire Emblem again. Yeah, there's been, like, for my weekend, it was kind of just boring, you know, like, sleeping 10 hours a day, oh something I don't like doing. God damn it. I don't like sleeping that long. Yeah, no, I don't really feel like, like, don't get me wrong, I like sleeping, but I just can't, like, I can't stay home for long periods of time, because for some reason, I just get, I don't know, I feel like I get depressed for some reason. Yeah, I think that's called cabin fever. Cabin fever? Yeah, you know, when you're stuck in a house and you just like, I gotta do something. Yeah, because, well, I mean, I don't feel, like, I don't want to sit around in my room all day, because then I just feel, I don't know, like, useless, and mm. I get depressed. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Well, that's why winter is a very bleak time frame for a lot of people. Yeah, it's... like, no, no, but I do like it when, like, I literally can't do anything outside, like, when it's, like, rainy or something. I hate rain. I would like it if it only rained at night because I'd be inside. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I love the sound of rain at night because, it, like, like I open my window, I get to hear the sound of rain, and this sounds very weird, probably. I know that. No, no, <laughs> some like, people like have the their own soothing noises. You know, like, say how some people like hearing the sound of the ocean when they go to bed, or like, say, how some people like the sound of the rainforest when they go to bed. What people do you know? Like, seriously, do these people live in your neighborhood or something? I'm just going with what I know, because, like, you oh, go to a Bed oh. Bath & Beyond, they have those Sounds of the Wilderness CDs that what? you can play when you go to sleep. They actually have that? This is probably not there anymore, but oh. I think they did once. Oh, because I've been to Bed Bath & Beyond, and they don't have that. They have, like, scented candles still, but... <laughs> Who wants scented candles in this day and age? Like, seriously. Just, very, they, very horny people. That or... <laughs> or people that smoke marijuana oh. and light them so they could try to hide the smell of weed. The sm <laughs> yeah, well... They yeah, go, that's another yeah, thing. Well, if weed didn't test, smell like that, I'm certain people would like it more. Yeah. Well, maybe I, that's why people try to ban it because of the smell. Yeah, maybe. That and... Like, I honestly don't know why. Me, I'm for it. Like, if it can help people, like... Good. Yeah, I'm for the legalization, but my gosh, the stoners themselves are very annoying. Like those people that bu do bicycling on the middle of the road, <laughs> or the vegans, <laughs> or Linux users. They always have to tell everyone they do it. It's like, I get it. You do thing. Don't tell me you do thing every eight <gasps> minutes. Oh, dear God. Trooper on. Oh no. Don't worry, it's just a Pegasus name. We don't need one, do we? Boo! Oh my god, read back to this again. If I could boo even more, I would. That's all that's all you got in you. Yeah. 
I could just have that one song I showed you where it's just literally just a bunch of Japanese people booing and throwing insults in Japanese. It's really? called Salty Abu. <laughs> it's just funny because, like, when Wasn't, you're, uh, when you, wait, you're I thought, salty. I thought those were Indian people you showed me. They were, I don't think they were Japanese. Uh, close enough. Eh. They're on the same uh, planet. No, those are two different races. Same hemisphere, different same thing. There you They're go. on the planet now, Earth. Close now, enough. <laughs> they're on the planet Earth. That's good enough. It's like trying to like confuse the Western like the Western music with like country music. Like they're not the same thing. Yeah, close enough. One has a twang, one has a ding 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 ding. Close enough. Do 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 I take it you never seen Deliverance. No. Um. Let's just say there is a. Yeah. Sorry, I'm a not, bunch of campers I, I get won? abducted by a bunch of hillbillies. One of the hillbillies which is like, I bet I can make you squeal like a piggy and all that stuff. And it's like, if you want to get out, you have to beat the little kid in the banjo duel. In the banjo kid, one of his opening twangs. Ding, 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 ding. It's just sort of like parodied everywhere. Oh, sorry. I'm not like a big movie person. I've always wanted to be one, though. This is the thing. I've always what, wanted to be a banjo player? No, I've. No, <laughs> not a banjo. I mean, I've always wanted to be like a um, movie buff. Yeah, I've always wanted to be like a movie person, but I just never get the time to like you know get into them. Cause like I it's... just I feel like their pots are reused so many times. It's okay. There's always like different movies. Like one I'm planning on seeing soon is uh one that I managed to get. It's this Korean-made film with English subtitles about an actual. Japanese folk hero, well not folk hero like a, like one of their national heroes from the 20th century Ricky Dozan, who was a Japanese pro wrestler post World War II basically think of like Hulk Hogan but for the Japanese people that popular. Oh nice that sounds kind of interesting actually. But here comes the twist he only entered the pro wrestling scene because he was not getting he was basically plateauing in the sumo scene because of his heritage which was Korean and the Japanese hate Koreans oh that doesn't sound so it's good. like he, he he got as high as they could let him and wouldn't let him go any higher because oh it's Korean that's as high as you go Japanese only for Yokozuna status <laughs> so he went to work with the pro wrestling which was starting to become a something in okay. fact one of the people that trained him, I looked up, was actually the guy who played Odd Job in the Bond movies. Oh, really? He played Odd Job? No, no. One of his trainers was Odd Job. Oh, okay. Who was also a pro wrestler. Oh, sorry if you can hear all that noise in the background. And then, like how you, in, you know, like the old generic wrestling in America is like the American hero in beats America, the evil foreigner. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Beats the evil foreigner. They, he did that in Japan, so it's like I eat to feed the evil white mana. <laughs> and it, it people ate it up. One of the pe and another fun fact, one of the people that helped like fund the wrestling shows was a mobster from America. What? Oh, it gets even funnier. Are you serious? I'm not kidding. I'm actually I should tell you guys, I'm also on the side working on my own little project of Japanese pro wrestling because I love it a lot. This mobster also brought pizza to Japan. What? Wait, what? He made the very first pizzeria in Japan and also funded pro wrestling in Japan to become a thing in Japan. Damn. And here comes the funny part. Wait, can you Well, I shouldn't say the... Can you actually, like, buy pizza in Japan to this day? Oh, yeah. The Domino's has their own specific branch where you can get any different types. Oh, wow. I mean, Well, then again, I mean, like, McDonald's exists in Japan, so I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Yeah, Domino's is the top pizza chain, with second place being their own specific one called Pizza La. Oh, oh, I thought, oh, I thought you were going to be, say, Pizza Hut or, like, Papa John's or something like that. Oh, no, no. So, like, it's, like Japanese actually... aren't that desperate. <laughs> wow. Yeah, they like making to... their own specific ones, like say a curry pizza or whatnot. But um, yeah, but now I'm in the mood for pizza. 
the mobster also with getting the funding also got the yakuza and trained them in a lot of the mob practices the so yakuza? are you serious the yakuza were already in everything else in japan at the time because yeah, well, yeah obviously. post world war ii everything was rationed so if you wanted to get a pack of cigarettes you had to go through the yakuza to get them you wanted to get that jewel necklace you want to get your wife you had to go through the yakuza black market are you sure you're not just making this up i feel like you kind of are no because post world war ii occupation until like the 1970s was very heavy on the restrictions but there were two american luxuries that became really popular became their own thing in japan baseball and pro wrestling baseball what in japan yeah, it's they treat it like remember, they treat it more like a sport there than we do here. We just treat it as like, oh, it's the a world's most expensive, or well, not even a pastime anymore. We treat it like just like a hobby. <laughs> well, that kind of to me. Well, I mean, I would classify a pastime as also like a hobby. Well, I mean, everyone it's to each his own, I guess I should say. Yeah, it's like the only places that treat baseball seriously anymore are Japan and the Caribbean. You like Puerto Rico, Cuba, Dominican Republic, Japan. Speaking oh, of what happened here? What? Oh, okay. It looked like it froze a bit for oh, me. Sorry. Yeah, if it like freezes, like tell me because I'm trying like this new like version of OBS. So like I, it's like very like wonky. So I'm trying like to make sure like nothing like bad goes wrong. So, um, the Super Bowl, it's in two weeks. You do know that, right? It's the 49ers yeah. versus who? I forgot the other team. The Chiefs. The Chief. What? They actually made it? The Kansas City Chiefs. This is the first Super Bowl they've been in since 1970. Oh, my God. My God. So, basically, so wait, actually, literally 1970 exactly? Super Bowl Four was their last Super Bowl appearance. So, for 49 years, they've been absent. Damn. They've been to championship games before. But they, During the 80s, they just didn't have anything in the 80s. Yeah, we give up. Like, for example, there are decades where they just struggled, decades where they just were, hey, we made the playoffs, but we lost. <laughs> and there's also, for the vast majority of the time, they just kept picking up quarterbacks from other teams to start for them instead of making their own. Like, say, Joe Montana, they picked him off from the 49ers. Rich Gannon once, Elvis, Elvis Gerback, Trent Greens. Like, they just kept picking up quarterbacks instead of making their own. And now they have their own that they're actually making, Patrick Mahomes, and he's doing really great work. Well, obviously, I mean, like, look, at, like, look they're in the Super Bowl after freaking nearly 50 years. Yeah. I mean, of course, you can't, I mean, of course, this is football, it's a team game, so you can't just, like, say that one person, like, brought them all the way there, so. I guess, it, so. It's even funnier that, uh, just last year with the Stanley Cup, St. Louis Blues made the Stanley Cup, and the last time they were there was in 1970. Wait, seriously, 1970? Seriously? Yeah, and the Blues, yeah, the NHL's older than you think. Damn, obviously. And the Blues finally won that one, their very first Stanley Cup. But the Chiefs, they actually won a Super Bowl. They beat the Vikings and lost to the Puckers. I mean, Packers. The Puckers. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm salty. You're so I live salty. in Minnesota. You have, you There's like five reasons why. You're so salty you got their name wrong by accident. Of course. Quote, unquote. But uh, I have to say, it just depends on how Kansas City's defense is going to be playing, if they're going to show up or not. If they do, <laughs> the game should be good. In the end, I want Kansas City to win because I am not a big 49ers fan. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't like their owner, he, Jed Clark or whatever his name is. He's kind of a, he's kind of like a yuppie or. He, he's the kid that got picked last in dodgeball, and he made sure that you, like, my mom says you have to let me play type of kid growing up. Oh my god, I hate those type of people. And then the whole, like, 
fire Harbaugh because of an 8-8 eight eight season. This coach brought you to the first Super Bowl in decades, and you fire him after one lackluster season. And then your team just struggles to even make a winning season after that. And now the team's finally doing good after what happened because he traded to get this one guy that was trained by Bill Belichick named Jimmy Garoppolo. I know. That's one of Alex's brothers because he's Italian. Yeah. I, that's I was, probably Alex's I, last name, Garoppolo. I actually... Could be. I mean, I don't know his last name, actually. No, I think he did tell us his last name once. It's like Vichetti or something. Yeah, 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 you're right. I was actually going through our old Skype chat, like, the beginning of our, like, group's Skype chat, and one of the funniest things of that group Skype chat, I have to say, was when you and him were, like, imitating, like, um, like, Italian people. Like, when, like, what'd you say about my Nana? And then, like, it was like, I say she been spaghetti me last night or something like that. <laughs> that was one of my funniest moments of that Skype chat. I was, I go back and read that still to this day. Nice. Uh, I have to look into this, because I have to, give me a second, I'm gonna look it up. It's there, like, type in Nana. You know, like the Fire Emblem character, like that. Oh, find. Yeah, yeah, there should be a find option. That's how I was able to do it. There we Cause go. Fuck that, because fuck if I'm, like, scrolling through the all the, the text. Yeah. Alright, here we go. We have a this chat, even though we don't say it, even though we don't talk to each other a lot. Alright, here we go. Let's see, this starts by talking about Caspar's War Master. And then you say short and powerful about Caspar. Then I reply, like a conquistador that sees you wearing gold. Short and powerful, you know, that, that joke. Dude. Or a Japanese soldier in the 1930s hearing you speak Mandarin. <laughs> Terrible joke, you know, Nanking and all that. Oh, here we go. Or an Italian hearing you say something mean about his mother. <laughs> and then Alex replies, what you say about my Nana? And then you and say, then I, <laughs> she make up me a pastrami in bed. Yeah, that... I gave her my uh, Alfredo. <laughs> she really touched up my spaghetti. <laughs> I remember when that was the thing. Yeah. They go to sit died like Uganda knuckles, and then yeah, I know though old memes are starting to make resurgence on Reddit. So for all we know, it was like only the end of the beginning. <laughs> memes like "Hello, my future girlfriend" are timeless, while vines die as fast as their length. <laughs> Six seconds. You and him like really connect. I gotta say, even though you like guys are like age groups apart, you two really connect for some reason. We're kindred spirits, you and I. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you have. Maybe you we have won't. just really good. Se we just have a similar sense of humor, and we go along with it. Like, yeah. like me and Zeb. Like, well, I mean, a quote unquote sense of humor. Well, Zev's I mean, I'm still upset about the dank magic joke he tried to do. Yeah, I mean, like, Zev's sense of humor is like, obviously, like, if I suck at something, like, obviously, he rolls with that. <laughs> He's definitely into the banter style of sense mm -hmm. of humor. Mm -hmm. No, only banter when it involves me. That's what I mean. <laughs> Prince no, he, Pr he can take a joke here and there, you just have to do it right. Yeah. He won he has a high standard for banter on him. But like uh, but he like but he plays it off as sarcasm, but it's like really hard to tell when you're being sarcastic when you're typing on a keyboard. Like what? Like I don't think that's how sarcasm works. Not in the same age. Maybe in like maybe in like the year three thousand or something. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Prince El Elias, you still alive. El Elias? Elias? Oh wait, right, Elias. Damn. Yeah, it's Elias. Right, I keep. I gotta remember that. I surprised myself at times as well, soldier. I brought help and much to t to my luck. It's the Gil it's the Gilgamesh Royal Army. I understand. Well, thanks. Wow. Oh wait, two F. Sir wow, damn. The chained land. Right. We're not really far into the recording, are we? We're only yeah. twenty four minutes in. Damn. Wow, we're making. Oh, wow. Usually this takes me yeah. forty five minutes to complete, but. Oh, for real? Time flies when you're not paying attention. Yeah, seriously, I'd even speed up most of the animations. <laughs> Gerald, <laughs> alongside Elias, managed to enter the Attican castle. They even met up with the Attican soldiers struggling to hold on to their beloved country. In due time, they'll free the castle, but not before the immense struggle. Oh, oh God, no. 
Damn, they're a husky even here. Meanwhile, here's me sounding like someone that just had a, a surgery on lung cancer. <laughs> what the hell happened when you were gone, El Elias? I well, you see, I had a couple Marlboros before I got here, and this is what happens, kids. Perhaps, <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, Matt. Yeah, I just let that go along with what Elias actually said. Perhaps I can explain. Sorry. I'm getting a bit of laggy. There we go. Who goes there? Sorry, I at least want you to voice Stanley. What the fuck? Yeah, only I can be the Stan. Yeah. Well, it seems that storm didn't kill you after. <laughs> She's talking about the snowstorm. <laughs> Oh, fuck. I just had one this weekend. <laughs> Quite the shame, really. You would have made a fine warrior for Og... Uh, Ogham? Ogham. Oh. Carenza, why do you hold Attica hostage? Simple, dearie. Uh, Ogham wills it. Okay, I did not hit anything there. I'm still waiting for it to load up. I'm oh. sorry. Meanwhile, st Oh, there we go. Ugh, I forgot she could teleport. <laughs> Stanley, who the God hell damn. is that woman? She can teleport? Remember when I joked about him? Oh, God damn it. Oh, my God. Are you serious? <laughs> I I thought that was just like one of those average jokes. Yeah, you know, I like, thought that, that was a joke. Yeah, remember? What, yeah, he said he even joked about that, but oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that was her. I'm sorry, but that, oh, my gosh. That actually was a recovery. For a moment, I was cured because of the joke. <laughs> Good thing you survived that storm she was talking about. Anything else I should know about her or anything among her? Well, she's very dangerous. Take caution. I understand. That's it? That's it. Well, what? I'm not going to tell you anything else. Why? Because that's going to involve my sex life. Don't you want... <laughs> Nobody wants to know what Stan the man does in bed. Oh, okay. That's his personal business and his alone. A maker of the husk for the Dark One Ogham. All right. Nosferat. Oh, no. She has Demon Nightmare. Lulls all enemies, but then ranged into a deep slumber. Oh. Oh, yeah. Wait, that's a Demon King thing. Never mind. I thought that was something unique. Oh, my God. Wow. We're really facing high... Powerful enemies, I have to say, like rune swords, silver weapons. When haven't we been facing powerful enemies? Uh, not in since the last chapter. I really think I feel like the difficulty spiked the last chapter. I mean, I lost two units. So let me see, Meister <laughs> Schwartz, Meister Lance. My God, my German's getting put to the test here. Good. Tempest. Oh, Tempest Blade. Jeez, this guy's like, what is he like? Edward. All right, so this doesn't seem like there's anything like steel or dropple here. Oh, uh, druids with sleep and silence. Great, my favorite spells. All right, let's uh, pick and choose our units. Uh, we can bring eleven, just like last time, but we lost two last time. So I guess I'll bring Frizzo and I'll bring Nikos with me, seeing as how I need a thief for the chest. Uh, yeah, that's all I'm gonna bring. I guess I'll just do some battle preparations. I don't think I have a lot of state. Oh, no, never mind. I'll bring a uh, restore on Donahan so that way he can restore people. Valkos, can he wait? Can he use restore? I don't. Oh, no, he can. All right, so wait, should I bench? I think I'm gonna bench Priya for this chapter. It's just not gonna see a whole lot of combat. I really just need someone to restore and heal. So I'll bring Vasco's, give him a men's staff, give him another axe, give him a killer axe. The thing is that the Berserker took all of the, all my hand axes with him when he died, so that's really annoying. So yeah, I got no hand axes left. Unless maybe the armory sells them? Let me check. Uh, no. Fuck. Alright, so yeah, we're, we have to basically play this map with no hand axes or javelins. So yeah, just one range combat only, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be a fun time without any, a single hand axe. I am wondering what this, this there has to be a secret shop out here. I refuse to believe. They wouldn't just put a wall, broken wall here. So I'm definitely going to see if I can figure that out. Uh, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, join us next time when Stanley will be killing his ex-wife. I'm going to love to see the... the you know what this is going to be called? The, uh, the divorce. What, the next episode? Well, I mean, think about it. You're getting rid of your ex-wife. That's a divorce. Oh, yeah. The divorce is swell. That's what I'll call it. <laughs> Later, ladies and gentlemen. See you soon.